Scientists removed brains from pigs that were dead. They'd been dead for four hours. They were slaughtered in a slaughterhouse for food. They took these brains, they put them in a lab, they pumped six hours of treatment through it, artificial blood through it, and they found signs of functioning going on in these dead brains. Uh, particular brain cells would, would respond normally when you, when you stimulated them. There are other signs that cells, at least in you know, a little regional level, w were you could restore some function in there. Now it's really important to say these were not, they did not restore a whole brain. These brains could not think, they could not feel. But within them, you could see little signs of activity. That's pretty amazing, frankly, especially in a large animal. We're not talking, you know, mice. We're talking a pig, which is about as big as, as a human. Uh, the, uh, there are other traits that a pig brain shares with a human brain. So, if you can do this in a lab, if you can make, keep these little functions going long in a lab, it creates a whole new way to study brains. It's a new way to study how brain circuitry works, how a uh, brain might r respond to an experimental treatment of some kind, uh, maybe how certain brain diseases work. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic research tool if they can get this to work uh, a little longer, uh, long enough for scientists to do some real studies of it. So a person who didn't show any activity of, of any brain life, does this mean that, you know, someday we could go in and resuscitate these people? And yet, in that case, what does dead mean? Uh, and it becomes really acute in questions like, uh, how, how dead does a person have to be before you remove organs to transplant into someone else? And there's a real practical question that could become a whole lot more complicated if there's some way to revive people whose brains up till now we thought were dead, gone, 